Uh, thanks for coming for the DI Hackfest. Uh, I'll just go through the agenda. So, um, if you see, we these are the peg your tickets which we want to complete. Uh, few months back, but they are still pending, so we would like to complete them during the Hackfest. Uh, and we'll go through these tickets one by one. We'll discuss them, where we are, what these tickets are, are, are all about. We'll give you the summary, and then we'll discuss the open-ended things. And if you think that there are few things which you can also contribute to towards it, these tickets to be accomplished, please feel free. Uh, and that is the way you will be get involved. So the first thing we would like to discuss about our, uh, is our team goal. And uh, we have some existing goal for our team. And we also had this uh, great idea from Tactica that we should be doing a coffee session uh, among friends. So uh, we did a few coffee sessions. Tactica did it with some of the contributors during the flock. And we wanted to know some pain points, if there are any, and we wanted to involve them as the work we want to do within the DI team to uh, you know, uh, suggest some solutions toward these issues or the pain points. So we would brainstorm these ideas, and we will figure out that if there are any more goals which we would like to involve, any short term, long term, or any future goals. And then we have this Fedora event guidelines, which we started, I guess, a uh, year earlier. Um, so if you have seen the gender neutral bathrooms in the quiet room uh, during flock, so these all are uh, coming from the ideas we are designing under the Fedora event guidelines. The majority of the work is done by B here. Uh, so we will take over these slides, and she will share what work we have done so far, what is covered, and what is the future goals under this particular topic. Then Fedora Women's Day. I think this is the third year of Fedora Women's Day we are running. Uh, we started it three years back and with, with I guess, few three, three Fedora women, three or four Fedora women events across the globe. But, but last year, we have done a great job, and we have done 10 Fedora Women's Day uh, across the globe. And this year, we are targeting even more. So uh, if, you, if you also want to do Fedora Women's Day at your place, uh, this is the right time to submit your proposals, and we will talk about it more under this topic. Then these are the few team-related things. Um, we would like to refine the team processes a little bit more uh, by defining the Fedora Council Diversity Advisor term and diversity inclusion team's uh, lead rules. So that will be uh, more of the team-specific things. So um, I'll just give you a brief about what we have done uh, in the past year um, in DI team. We are, let me tell you just that we are very a small team of few people. And last year, it was like uh, very less um, you know, active volunteers we had in this team. Uh, still, we did a great job and accomplished many of things which are listed over here. Uh, DI team always sponsor outreach program, and that we have done last year as well. We have organized Fedora Women's Day, which I told you that 10 of these events we have done across the globe. Um, we have done con content creation. We created a fantastic video. Uh, I think we have the link here, B. <coughs> if we have the link, we can show that later as well. Um, event guidelines, uh, which is the ongoing work, and some of them uh, that we have already accomplished, which I have mentioned, like the gender neutral bathroom and the quiet room, etc. Uh, we onboarded a few new uh, contributors as well because that was the need of the time, and uh, Nikhil, Pooja, and Taktika is back in the team, uh, so we have more energy and more resources in the team to work together. 
<coughs> we have also enhanced internal processes in the team, like the decision making process was not there, now it is there and uh, we still need to finalize it, but yes, it's there. Um, DI represent, uh, representative, team representative and the council representative, that is what we are working on the documentation and that side we are also improving. Our present, presence at FLOG uh, is, was always fantastic and uh, this year as well we have done a great job. We did a uh, organize a translation uh, session and we created a video and we uh, are having this hack fest as well. We did the coffee uh, with friends. Um, so that's about the work which we have done so far and some of them are still we are working on. So what is the aim of this Hackfest? What we would like to take away from this Hackfest is, so uh, you have seen that we have some of the tickets listed, <coughs> but they are not the things which we can accomplish within these two hours. Our main basic aim is to brainstorm what should be the next step for these tickets and take away the action items which we need to do because diversity and inclusion is not a very easy and straightforward topic. It's not like a programming that if this, else this, true or false, no. It's, it's a lot of uh, effort of many people and many ideas and many thoughtful processes that uh, we would like to implement in the com community to make it more diverse and inclusive without hurting anyone's sentiments. So it takes a lot of effort of everybody to brainstorm these ideas and come up with with the next steps and getting it approved uh, from the councils and legals also takes time. So that is not the aim to finish anything. The aim is to brainstorm these ideas and take it forward. So as I told you earlier, how do we do it? We're gonna uh, go through the, these tickets one by one. We will uh, give you the summary, what we have done, where we are and what is the next step. We'll brainstorm about it, and then some of you, uh, I think Justin told that he want to do it, he wants to do it, that he will update the ticket accordingly, whatever we have done for that ticket. <laughs> but <coughs> always we have uh, helping hands who can help you with that, okay? So uh, without wasting further time, let's uh, straightforward start with the first ticket, DI Team Goals. We have these goals listed and it's kind of divided into two parts. One part says, uh, talks about what we would like to do or what we have done in the community. And another is team specific. So I would rather focus in this head first, the first part and the second part we can anyways have informal conversation within the team uh, to accomplish those goals. So first of all is the Outreach Summer uh, Internship. This we have been sponsoring uh, like the three years, from three years now. And we need to think about it and we need to come up uh, with a decision that we would like to continue doing it. And if we would like to continue doing it, how if we can improve this process more for the benefit of the community. Another one is the Fedora Women's Day. Uh, created content that will make impact in the community. So like the video creation, uh, blog, blog post, and such co content which will reach to the people and educate them about the diversity and inclusion. Event guidelines uh, and the translation on important content. Like uh, for example, Matthew Miller came up with, with the Fedora mission statement with, with the new goals of the community, but uh, they, uh, being from the native lang language, native speaker of English, they uh, end up using, uh, I mean, not basic English, maybe some jargons which, which not everybody is aware of. So our aim is to reach to, the, to all the people, the maximum people of the community, so that they understand this important content. So that is what we also would like to discuss about. <coughs> so here is the open questions we have. What we would like to continue with? 
these are the goals listed which we already have so out of these goals what we would like to continue with what we should improve on what we should stop doing and what we would like to include new so this section tactica you need to come over here the last section what we would like to include new because we would like to hear the feedback which we gathered by the coffee sessions and we would like to know that what people would like us uh, like us to do in the coffee So I didn't got to have the slide done. Okay, so uh, it was there was not that many people, but for me I think it was more than enough. It was we had eight people participating, five were in person, three were online. So for having such a short notice, I think that it was it was a good input. I had new people and I had all contributors, so I got feedback from both sides of the coin. Uh, most of the people felt that they were comfortable in terms of inclusion inside the community. Uh, half of the people felt that they had done something that had hurt someone in some way, non-intentional inside the community. Uh, but the whole part of that information was that since the creation of the uh, advisor, uh, the diversity advisory position, they kind of started to overthinking a bit, you know, thinking a bit more about uh, how inclusive it was, how their actions were, and what were they doing with their um, uh, other members of the community. So it was good that at least the creation of the position kind of put them into reality that there is people who needs, uh, who has their needs, their likes, their shares, and all of that, that, they, that we are all different. So, um, what I felt, well, that one of the questions was, what do you think about the Fedora Diversity and Inclusion team is doing well? And uh, I have only been in this conference in a long time but most people said that events had more information for making people feel more comfortable, including the, the tax and all of that. Uh, but they pointed out that there is still some uh, non-cooperative relationships on the big support social channels, meaning big IRC channels, big, big Telegram channels, like the big ones, uh, they usually get some not harassment, but uh, meaning comments that should not be there. The bigger the crew, the harder to handle, so it's kind of understandable, but now with more uh, admins and all of that, it's easier to, to solve it in a short amount of time. Uh, what I did had a feeling in the community, and this probably is not too related to the diversity team, but I don't know if we can do something in there, uh, was that they were worried about the drop-off rate. They were worried that the, the activities that they, are, they have been doing in the past two or three years have been mostly putting down some fires instead of doing new things. And uh, the overall feeling of the members that I could interview was that they felt comfortable, but they were quite bored. So, um, again, probably not diversity, but it is inclusion. So we need to make people feel included into something that has meaning to be part of a community because at the end, isn't that what is this all about? So maybe we, as a, an inclusion team, can work on providing more challenges making the right connection between teams and uh, the making of connections between teams that probably are not related in some levels, it's going to make them not just 
feel that they have a purpose inside the community and that they are doing new things, but also will allow people to also meet new people inside the community and have a different approach of the reality of each one. So we will be not only making them do something, but knowing people. And uh, that's probably what we should be doing on a regular basis on this team. Um, that was mostly the input. I would like to continue with this. Uh, uh, I cannot say that word so, because it's going to be recorded. So with these conversations, these informal conversations for a bit longer, probably a couple of months, I know some people who has um, something to share, but probably due time and a bit of panic, they didn't share it and have a better input with at least uh, 30 or, or 40 people that, that we can reach out and have a bigger uh, output. But I think that, that that was really good information for having just a couple of people, that's a bit better. Yeah, putting together the, the word that we cannot say and all the information that we cannot gather, but it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, uh, the top, the first section. I think we should, because these are all other things which we have. Microphone, Amida. So microphone, Amida. You made me use a microphone. Go yeah. a microphone. So these are the things which are listed in the first uh, half of the section, are which we have been doing so far. These are the things which have uh, the impact in the diversity part of the DI team. And I feel that diversity is already there now. We, we are already there now. I mean, look around, around you the, and see the difference in the numbers of, of the ratio of different kind of people. Now it is time to shift our focus a little bit to the inclusion side and adding a goal for that, which Taktika also brought up a fair pro point here that talking to different people, this is, this is the topic or this is the thing where we would like to focus more and at least add a goal for the next year in, for the team. So what do you think, what, what it can be that will resolve this problem and Um, I think one of the things that, because of our, our team size, I think one of the things that we are in a unique position to do, especially if you look at the council flow chart, or the, 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 in the council docs there's the flow chart of the broader Fedora community, and where the diversity and inclusion team is seated, we have this really great opportunity to help these other higher level bodies in Fedora drive policy and like think about things that are outside of their day-to-day -day work, right? So like, one of the things that's been in the back of my mind is instead of us trying to take on new work as a team, maybe shifting our focus towards advising other groups, like so like specifically around Mindshare, like what, what came up in Tatika's feedback about making better connections between teams that are unrelated to each other. As, as a an entity to that, like, and today in the Badges Hack Fest, we had these three groups of people that for the longest time have not had conversations together. We had the designers of the Fedora badges, we had the infrastructure team, and we had programmer, or like the developers work, or people who are more familiar of the development of badges, all sitting in the same room and talking together for the first time that I've seen in like six years. And it's like, that's the kind of engagement I think that we can want that we want to encourage, and I think one way that we can try to influence is that is like we, we can see these things or we can come up with suggestions and work with the Mindshare Committee who is charged with this specific task in the Fedora community mm -hmm. and work with them as partners and co-collaborators in trying to push some of this forward. Same thing with the Fedora Council outside of the um, like better connections with teams. There was, some, oh, so like the, the Telegram, or like, well, it wasn't Telegram specifically, but the user communities aspect. That is a really hard and very high burnout. Mm -hmm. 
area, I think, about managing, like, for example, we have these user communities, and there was this big, to keep things short, there's a lot of these really huge user communities that I think have good intentions in the beginning, but then suddenly they grow to this point where it's very difficult for them to manage, and I think it might help to come up with some recommendations and guidelines for community moderation. You know, we have a code of conduct, but what happens if you are like a smaller piece, mm -hmm. or an, a, a smaller group in Fedora, and you take the code of conduct and use the Fedora logo, and you know, like, hey, we have it, and then you enter a situation where it's obviously like what's happening in the group or the chat is not compliant, or it's, it's, it's not great behavior, it's not being people being excellent to each other, and then it's kind of like, uh, like the, the thing that was, is documented in the code of conduct now is, okay, open a ticket with the Fedora Council, which it, it works well if it's, or it's be that's better suited if it's within the contributor community, but what about when it's a user community? You know, like it's like, oh, there's this Telegram user who I have no idea who this is, random person on the internet who harassed me, and like, well, I mean, it's a problem, but there's not like a, it's not a thing that Fedora Council can, you know, open, you open a ticket with the Fedora yeah, Council, right. right. So. One thing that I think we could suggest with the Fedora Council to do is, well, we're seeing these things, so maybe we should suggest to them, like, open a ticket or open a proposal with them, draft community moderation guidelines. So if you are one of these derivative communities in Fedora, because we are such a huge community and there's no reasonable way that we can, mm -hmm. you know, keep eyes on everywhere. Everything, yeah. You know, how can we empower the people who have good intentions and want to be good community leads to do the right thing without, act, like, without feeling overwhelmed or getting burnt out when it's grown to a point where like they can't keep up with it anymore and it has a life of its own. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that with some of the user communities I've moderated in Fedora and beyond, like that's a problem. A lot of communities in open source, in technology, anywhere are having that problem. And like, I think it would be really great. It'd be, standing on the shoulders of other giants, like Mozilla has done, I think, a really great set of guidelines around this. So like, we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel, but we could think of like, what does that look like for the Fedora community? But instead of our team being the one, let's sit down and draft these guidelines, I think we need to find our partners in the community that we can have as our co-collaborators. And I see, like thinking of the flow chart, with the Fedora Council in the middle, and you have the engineering branch, and you have the Mindshare, Mindshare branch. Like I see the Mindshare and Fedora Council and Fesco to some extent too. Those are our our, our partners, right? Those are our, our areas where we can try to add perspective mm -hmm. to these higher level places in the community to try to affect positive change and hopefully have it be a trickle down. You know, if you see the um, the, the graph have that flow chart work its way down into these smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to like take each of these, I wish, I wish I, I should, we should have put that in the slide now that I think about it, that's a really great visual, but it's just like you see all these different arms, you know, branching out in so many different directions and maybe for a long time we've been thinking like, instead of looking at the individual pieces, like each arm and be like, okay, well how can we make things good here or make things better here? Well maybe we should look at like, move the feedback loop into the top and hope, try to affect change that way. And I feel like now I'm just kind of repeating myself, but I know, that's just something that came to mind, like listening to that feedback. Like there's a lot of things like, I've been in like, that's kind of in my mind for like the back of my mind with the, some of the user communities I'm in on like on Telegram, just because that's what I, I use more. And it's just like, it's at a point now where it's like, uh, sometimes I'm just so overwhelmed and like, uh, you know, I, I, I look away for an hour and now there's 200 messages and like, like I can't read all those and let alone like I know there's probably things in there that are not really comfortable with, but it's just like, I don't have the tools in my toolbox right now, and like, I mean, I could sit down and like, uh, draft these guidelines for Telegram, but then it's going to be, I'm gonna be in my own little niche, and I'm sure there's other places, other teams that could use these things, that would have, you know, would be really helpful to have guidelines, and, and here's the, um, I don't know if we can like, link that somewhere, like in the diversity chat, maybe in the channel, just put a link to that, uh, that image. Um, but like I, that's something that's been in the back of my mind because I think for a long time we've tried to take this very hands-on approach to doing these things ourselves. And sometimes that's the right approach. Like Fedora Women's Day I think is a great example of that mm -hmm. because that's like a very collaborative, like, I, think I think it's a great example of the kind of things that we as our team can do and like have an impact on. But when it comes to these really big challenges of, and maybe this could be one way, I don't want to, like, 
I don't, we can probably come back to the event guidelines, but that could be one example of like we can work with you know the Fedora Council as maybe that's like one direction to push those forward. Um, but. I have a question. So uh, going back into all the things that uh, we could approach and try to help with, will the burnout rate be something that it's in our side of the of the work? Like with our team? Yeah. Or it's more into other community because it's not like we are going to recruit more people. That's marketing ambassadors, advocates, whatever the program that is going to handle that is. Uh, but the burnout rate, the drop off rate, who is in charge of it? So, can I actually? Uh, Go. I want I want to pull some. There's something that a really interesting term that I was reading about a while ago, and it's. When you're, this team is in a unique role because I think we are, we hear more about the things that are bad or negative. Like when there's problems in the community, we get, or we, 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 we see that negative feedback more than maybe the Fedora Council would. And maybe not we as a team, but we as individual people mm -hmm. in the Fedora community. And so there's this term like being a toxic handler, right? And yeah. this is something that can exist in any organization any open source project, but the idea is that the toxic handler is the kind of person who provides like, like informal, not, it's not like a, a role that you were given or assigned, but you happen to receive a lot of like, neg uh, like the psychological effects of like negative feedback around like different things that are toxic in a, in a workplace environment or in an open source community. And so like, I think that that's definitely something that we as a team should be mindful of is that we do see probably a different perspective on some of the things happening in the community just because, I mean, not saying, not saying like everything is terrible, you know, everything's bad, like that's not what I'm saying at all, but like we just have, I think we are more in the loop on some of that, that feedback and I see the council mindshare um, way of trying to drive the discussion forward. That could be a way to, um, try to reduce that a little bit. That's a long haul. <laughs> <laughs> or at least that, that's what I think, like that would help us be mindful of that, realizing that we do see a lot of that, instead of us trying to like internalize that and think of like how do we, how does the diversity and inclusion team solve this? Let's work with our partners and our co-collaborators, the Mindshare Committee, the Fedora Council. Maybe at some point, like one relationship I would love to think about is like how can FESCO and the diversity and inclusion team work together? Like, because we don't, we don't do anything really right. with them. That's and that's true. a huge part. Like if you look at the flow chart that was linked in the channel, yeah. like that's a huge half of the community. Community. So I got your point. Uh, with that, I just want to remind that for each topic, we have 45 minutes. Uh, for, for two topics, we have 45 minutes. And another topic, we have like uh, 30 minutes or so. So we would like to stick to the timelines as well. For, uh, that is a very great perspective. What, I, what is the takeaway from that is I think what we can do is there are two parts of it. One is taking the guidelines which are done by our other partners in DI space in open source and sharing those guidelines with the rest of the community, people like FESCO or the Mindshare community uh, teams who can help us implement those guidelines to different teams and six. So that is what is the basic idea which I got from your point of view. Uh, I also would l uh, like to say about inclusion, uh, this tactic which you have initiated, a coffee with friends. I think we should, we can make it an ongoing activity. We can do it, open a window once in a month or once in a three months, that this is the time one week uh, where few of us are available from the DI team to have coffee with friends and to listen to their ideas and their pain points and things. And there we can get what what are the actual things are happening in the community to get that idea so that we can address them with the proper guidelines and not bombarding them with a lot of guidelines which are not required in our community. Was that? Like an anonymous form kind of thing, like an online, like. Mm -hmm. 
maybe we can just uh, open a Google form kind of thing that you can submit your request to have to have a coffee with friend. <coughs> like, that can be one inroad. How implementation part, but I think the. So we will have the people from uh, in the DI team. We have nice blend of people from different time zones, so they can choose, pick and choose who is their favorite one and what is the comfortable time for them. And I would just like to add one more suggestion to this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to say, like, we already have the Fedora Happiness Packets project, so maybe we can use that more or link it, link to it more so that people use it so they know there's also a way to, like, appreciate others. So, like, we decided to create this so that people in the community, like, say thanks more to each other and appreciate each other for their work more. And one thing we are trying to do, like from ju what Justin said, is like making different groups interact. Mm -hmm. So if they have like already interacted or if they have even like they know of each other's work, I think this would be a good way to like start those small interactions or at least so show some appreciation. So the people who are feeling like too bored or too like mm, they're having like negative thoughts, they they might start feeling more, a bit more positive about the community experience. So if we can just link to the Fedora Happiness Packets website somewhere, or like put it uh, somewhere more visible, which people can use regularly, I think it would be a good thing to do too. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Uh, okay, so if somebody has taken notes, the action item or the takeaway for, for, for this one is like, we should make the coffee with friend activity continuous activity. We will come back to the implementation part later. That's how we would like to do it once in a two months or so. Um, next is the guidelines for uh, taking the guidelines from the different communities and sharing them with the, with the other groups in Fedora, which are appropriate or which are required for Fedora community. And the last one, which I would like to, yeah. Okay, that, that's a different, totally different one. Uh, the, uh, like we have been doing the Fedora Women's Day and the, on the similar line, we are, have, we are successful do, doing that. So I would like to initiate one more event uh, once a year f from our team that is LGBTQA, but that, that also depends on our bandwidth and, uh, and how we would like to do it. Just. Um, I was just going to say one action item I think we should also take away from that is I feel like we have a lot of things in our issue tracker mm -hmm. that while they're good ideas, I think we might need to reconsider how we want to approach them. And I see thinking of it from the perspective of how can we partner with other groups. Right. I, so I think the action item is review our all of our like tickets that have been open for a really long time, we've been stuck on, the ones that are you know, older than eight months a year and figure out like, can we, as a as the yes, small yes. team that we are, push yeah. these things forward, exactly. or do we need to find partners to help us like move this feedback in a place where it can be acted on? Yeah, so the idea of that is uh, what we would like to stop doing, what we need to eliminate. So, so we definitely would like to do that in Pegyo. So like an action item, I, can, I could take that action item to do like a preliminary review through our, our or a holistic review through all of our tickets yeah. and put some feedback in like for questions to ask and then we could review them at a meeting or asynchronously later on. I think what we can do is we can make repo of the years, like the current year, 
the goals we have discussed, we should have the issues of those goals in under that year only. And the next year, we have the another one. So even if we have some ticket or the idea for the future one, we just keep it in the separate repo so that we don't go there and spend time over there. I'm not sure if I follow the suggestion. Yeah. What we can do to make it like in collaboration with other teams. Or for example, we have the onboarding designers, mm -hmm. which is something that, um, thank you, which is something that every team is suffering in Fedora, like including Fesco, for example. Design. Uh, so like uh, we can kind of have it as a test for our team, seeing mm -hmm. how to make the onboarding easier and having also like, people that uh, they were very active in our team, but they were kind of burned out or whatever, and they are not active anymore. Even like what approach to have even for that is something that will be helpful not only for our team, mm -hmm. but for every team in Fedora. And it's something super helpful and I think like super important that we can work on yeah, for all the teams. Exactly, I, that's a very good point. Even a while back, I was like hesitant to send an email. We, you remember that, right? We, yeah. And we have to do it because we. Uh, I, I had a talk with discussion with Ben Cotton, which I need to share in the uh, upcoming slides about the elections. And he was talking to me about the eligibility of the vote, uh, how people should vote, on what criteria. So I would like to keep it in within the team. I would like to know your perspective as well for the diversity advisor because not many other people know, the community know that, what a DI advisor does and who it is the appropriate person for that. But for that, we need to clean our FAST group, right? So, and it was very difficult for me to send out that email. I have never done it, it is my draft. So we have, if we have the process in place, we just need to follow that, right? We, we will not be like, hesitant for implementing what is correct. Okay, uh, so to that note, you will be uh, taking care of cleaning the ticket. I, I leave the implementation to you. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, so this is a time check, we're at three minutes till the first 45 minute mark. Okay. So I was thinking maybe we can, so this. Yeah, I was thinking like for the, the, the general goals, maybe we can recap all of our action items that we were just right. discussing exactly. and then wrap up here and move on to the event next guidelines one. next. Next one. So do you have all the action items up there on your end? I have four. Do you want to read them out? Uh, the coffee with friends, we're going to make it uh, the yeah. uh, ongoing activity. Yeah. The second one is the guidelines. We're going to create, uh, bring in the guidelines. The first one to start is with the uh, cleaning of the FES or uh, keeping that up to date. That is the guideline we can gonna look up to the different communi communities and share it with share, uh, our community groups. Uh, the third one is uh, making more connection with, with how do we develop more connection with the existing groups uh, like Mindshare and FESCO. The fourth one is, which we have not discussed, but we can still open a ticket and discuss over there, is the LGBTQA event, how we want to do it or if we want to do it as a team or not. Okay, cool. <coughs> we can move on next. And I guess also the like ticket triage as well. Was that a fifth one? Yes, yes. Cool, so uh, do we want to put names on those for now or we want to try to time box I them? think we can, we can, we should put names. That will be yeah. the best thing. Ticket triage. So for the ticket triage, I can, I can it's follow just, up uh, on our past ones and rethink about how, I feel like in some ways, maybe that's related to the working together. Maybe that's two action items in one, because it's really thinking, how can we collaborate with other communities? Well, I think that's also looking at the things that we're doing already and seeing where can we push those. Like either can, can we do them or do we need to work with another group? Would you say that they're the same? Which two? The Tree. guidelines one and the group one. Cross, all right thinking about how we can start collaborating with other, other sub-projects in Fedora, like mm -hmm. connecting them together mm -hmm. and, and driving that through like the other committees, like Mindshare Council, mm -hmm. and me going through our ticket triage and thinking of that, like going through with that perspective. Makes of, sense. Okay. These two are of Justin. LGBTQE uh, event, I can take. If anybody wants to take, please feel free. Uh, this Coffee with Friends, I guess, Tactica. You can take that up because you started it. Thank you. Uh, guidelines for different things. Uh, 
though I am okay Nikhil and Pooja to take it up, but I feel somebody who has a little bit more experience should be helping them. Because you, we, you will know the other communities more than them, so you need to help them. So Yona will help Justin, uh, uh, Nikhil and Pooja for that. So Nikhil and Pooja will be doing that, and Yona will be helping them. <coughs> <coughs> So we are good here? I think so. Cool. I would like to invite uh, B. Don't make anybody fall. <laughs> <laughs> and um, hello. Wait. Don't fall again, please. <laughs> so. Uh, Uh, so now I'll be talking a little bit about the Fedora event guidelines. So we we have been working on this since the since last two years uh, almost now, and so the aim for this is that we want to make like Fedora events more diverse and inclusive. So we want to provide a set of guidelines to event organizers within our community on how they can do this. And I, I ha like last year at Flock, we presented like some draft of these guidelines. However, like we received a lot of feedback on it, and then now we have decided to reiterate. And here is a second draft proposal for this. So I before so the link for the draft is there, the Bitly link, which I recommend you to all open because we'll be having an activity based on the draft proposal now. Okay, and um, so I just want to just highlight these two points before we before you read the draft. The first thing is that like the draft pr proposal is for like all event organizers who are a part of Fedora community. So if you are organizing a Fedora event like a Fedora release party or like Fedora Women's Day or even Flock, it's applicable to them. So the scale of events ranges from like local events, say like 10 to 20 people to flock, which is like 500 people, I don't know, 100 people, but like pretty big. So, uh, and another thing is like all these guidelines are suggestions. They are nothing is mandatory here. We want to discuss more about how we implement this. If we want to make something mandatory or like how we uh, ensure that community goes through this and tries to work through this, but right now they are all like written up as suggestions. Nothing is mandatory, and we, I would love your feedback on the whole uh, draft proposal. So I have um, created a small activity based on how we can, how you can give feedback for this uh, draft. So the first thing I want you to do is just go through the uh, in beginning sections, introduction the note on leaving feedback and how to use this guide. I want like everyone to read this section so then get a basic overview of what the guidelines are about and how to go through the proposal. The next thing I want you to do is pick a section of interest, uh, whichever you like. Ideally, we would all pick different sections so that we can have different recommendations from each section. and. For that section, I want you to go through like uh, all the guidelines in that section and evaluate based on these three questions, A, B, C. So first one is like, is this, is the language clear? Is it understandable? Can you, do you know what it's saying? The second one is for this uh, suggestion, what do you think, like what would be the efforts required and what would be the impact you think it could have? Would it be low, medium, or high? And I would prefer that you think like as you are an organizer of a Fedora release party, so on a small scale. So 
think like you are you're going to organize a fedora release party in your local community and like do you think you can implement this guideline what would be the efforts required from you what impact would you have and if you identify a low effort but like high impact guideline just put a small apple near it and if you uh, identify a high effort high impact guideline put a green check mark near it we already have some of these in the document feel free to if so, if you don't think some of the uh, suggestions are tagged accurately feel free to uh, write it down i'll pass you all sticky notes so you will know about it and we can then discuss this later the third thing i want you to think about is like what more resources do you need to implement this? Do you need any support from the diversity and inclusion team or from somewhere outside of Fedora? Or just do you need to do a lot of research work in, on the internet to implement this? And so it, you don't think it would be feasible for you to do this. So I want you to think of these three questions uh, for each guideline in the section you select. And one another broad thing I would like to you, your thoughts on is that, like, the evaluation method like we discussed like should we have all these as suggestions but then if all of them are suggestions how do we actually ensure that the community tries to do some of them at least so so do we encourage people to implement like all of the low effort ones or like how do we go on about this so please uh, think about like the implementation suggestions too and then uh, after 15 20 minutes after you have gone through the se selected section, we can uh, review the feedback. So, do you want to split up sections before yeah, we all split up? Yeah. Maybe the table of contents, maybe. Oh, which one you choose? Yeah. So, if you can just tell me, I will write down here what section you choose. So. Okay. So, Yona C wants C O C. Feel free to take a smaller subsection too because sections are sometimes too long, but then take like multiple ones so that it's not too small. Then, Tactica? I am ready to go. Oh, Again. You want me to read out all the sections Thank for everyone? Because all my input needs to be taken. Yeah, I know, but go for it. Again. <laughs> Okay, Nikhil wants it's even the time for it. Oh, in the issue tracker. Amita, do you want a section? It's, yeah. Do you want me to read out all the sections for everyone in the room before we split okay. them up? So we have an organizing committee. We have venue selection and on-site services, catering, COC, Shiona's doing, participant and speaker selection, event registration, Nikhil's doing that, child care, inclusive practices during check-in, grant scholarships, assessments of the event, and then, I don't know if the resources are all there, if resources is one or all three of them. It's links, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that's it. Are. So, is there any left? There are many left, so just. But it would be nice to have your feedback here too, okay. in person, so. You want speaker selection? Pooja wants speaker selection. Yeah. Inclusive practices during check-in for Tatika. No, she's doing child care. So that's good. <laughs> so it leaves. We have organizing committee, venue selection, and on site services. Well, 
Well, open the section. No, I opened it. It's not allowed. <laughs> I already did justice. Oh. Yes, yeah, it isn't allowed. It is small. So I'll pass you sticky yeah. notes. If you have any feedback, write on the sticky notes. Um, so yeah, you can do COC and um, organizing committee together. Yep. <laughs> You can add um, organizing committee for Yona. I can do scholarships and grants. Figure you'd be a student again. So that leaves us with, we still have catering, which looks like a pretty small section. Is venue selection up there yet? That's a huge, venue selection is a huge one. Um, Oh, so I'm doing venue selection? Yes. Oh. You can also add um, grant scholarships. I'll, I'll look at that one, too. Or do we have? Oh. OK, yeah. Then just kidding. Just venue selection is pretty big. Yeah, I know. Um, we have, oh, there's still um, assessment of an event, like a post assessment, which is unclaimed. So I'm just going to read them all off for again, and we'll check that we have them. We have. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to I'm going to read through the the big titles, and you can just tell me if we have them all. Organizing committee, venue selection and on-site services, which is me. Um, catering. So catering. Uh, COC, which is Yona, participant and speaker selection, Puja. Um, event registration, Nikhil. Child care, Amita. Inclusive practices during check in, Tatika. Grant scholarships, B. Assessment of the event. Do you want to take that one, B? It's a small section. Yes, yeah, so you can do grants and the assessment of the event. If you have seen the gender neutral bathrooms, quiet rooms, it's all, uh, we have provided some guidelines to the council and the event uh, organizers that these should be included while doing the events. So we have more guidelines. And for under catering also, we have provided some guidelines and we have written it in the doc. We would like to have your feedback on that. Thank you very much. I hope everybody knows what to do. So let's start. And, 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 and what is training? Uh, what is uh, for, for wh when you say training, you have. Uh, so, usually, like I, in other conferences, what I have seen for speaker training is that they have a session, a 30 minute like video call or a virtual session with new speakers who are like first time speakers. They provide them, like, say, these templates, they give them guidelines on how you should, like, your, the font you should use, or how you should design your slides, how you should speak, what is okay, what is not okay. Okay, okay. Uh, this uh, you need much training with templates and hmm. with the expertise, because when you uh, send a new member of the community to the first talk uh, release party, hmm. uh, I go with this member to to the university to the release party whatever, I go and I say, okay, no problem, stay here, speak, and I help, I help this guy. This is, this is the, the... Yeah, but you just, this is sort of training, but you are doing it as a mentor, like for one person, we yeah. want to do it for everybody, like in a generalized way, because sometimes not everybody might know you Okay. to do that. So we just want to offer like, uh, okay. some templates, some resources that you can read through these links if you are a new speaker, and this will be helpful for now, you. How many years do you have in the community? A lot. How Ten years? Years? Ten years in the community? No. Yeah. <laughs> you, remember, you remember the wiki page have a lot of templates for your... The slides? Yes, yeah, slide templates. Well, I, I think that's a conversation that we would want. 
I think that it's a, it, that's a great feedback, and I think that's the kind of like that would be like I think maybe we should try to take some of this feedback and come okay. up with like our action items just as a time check because we have 45 minutes. Um, I'm so, thinking like because that would actually be like like Lewis like that would be great feedback for the Mindshare committee because you. you know they're they're the team that's trying to like make the you know, going out to talk about Fedora and make doing these things easier for people. And that's exactly the kind of feedback that, you know, being like, hey, like, I'm trying to find these things and, like, I don't know where they are anymore. That is, like, totally justifiable. And that's the kind of thing the Mindshare Committee should be. Um, I really wish I could jump into their hack fest or their, their workshop right now, but. For, um, for, for that specifically, I don't think Mindshare will have to do anything. You should just fill the ticket with the sign for that kind of resources and do it. No, but I think because they, they're already created, that's my, in, my interpretation, yeah, but it, right? Yeah, a refresh is never boring, as, as, as I said after the... I read after. Lewis's feedback differently that, like, there's not a refresh that's needed, but, like, oh, yeah. find, like resurfacing these resources. Yeah. Right, maybe maybe what's better, I know is your time on time. Can we move by section, section? You just want to do maybe, like, quick readouts, everyone yeah, just, like, yeah, kind of yes. goes through okay. their feedback? So... You are online, we will, I will read out, like I will go to one section, read out the feedback in that section, and then we can discuss that feedback. We have 15 minutes left for this slot now. So, yeah, and then we can go move on to other topics. So the first thing which we already started discussion on was like speaker selection, which, and the feedback here from Lewis and Pooja was like first, what is the speaker training uh, exactly? And like, do you offer templates for presentation or do you do sessions? Like, how do you do it? And Justin was saying that you collaborate with Mindshare for this. We can discuss it with them, partner with them. Another feedback here uh, was that like, when, yeah. Justin, could you, could okay. you take okay. actions so for the process. things? that could be doable because, uh, for example, I can take care of just doing an unified rep of designs and stuff for conferences, and that would be easy doable. Uh, yeah. So we have actions for after this. If you, if you have a template and you have a training, and Match uh, this this complete. This is a one a one line. Coc training and, and, and offer template is a one line. So we want to provide them COs like introduce them to what is our code of conduct for Fedora. We want to offer yeah. them templates. If you co if you um, complete these three lines, you com um, you cover the Coc for, because okay. uh, you are on the lines. You are yeah. in the gu complete uh, uh, compliance the guidelines. Yeah, yeah. and. COC, you need cover of templates, training, and example illustrations. Uh, like is, what should, slide, for like Fedora slide. logo, or yeah, like how to put slides, it? Yeah, slides for Fedora. And what is offer okay, scholarships? I see one line, I really mm -hmm. unclear that. Offer scholarship, scholarship is uh, the last scholarship is in 2011. I remember for Itamar, Itamar have this scholarship. And so we can just say that at Flock we are also we have the diversity grant and like for people to come here okay. and for smaller events I we can think about if we want to fund them like but I but I think we fund organizers we don't fund attendees to travel so I don't think like this will be relevant for Fedora okay. community I will just remove that line I will keep it I will okay. remove the line from the doc and the feedback here is keep and um, keep and maintain on uh, okay this is oh, don't problem with that this is my really unclear lines okay, okay so his own creativity how you guys do it oh yeah now we have puja's feedback okay. on speaker selection okay thank you <laughs> For the invited speaker, I have one suggestion. Speak up. Okay. Like we need to keep and maintain the list of possible speakers, but how? Like uh, we, if we are organizing our event locally, we don't have the like the list. Like how we can approach to other organization or other. Like we have the local speakers, but how to contact with other speakers? Uh, is there any like platform where we can? Uh, 
So maybe we can uh, like do you are you saying that we provide links to nearby organizations like Pi Ladies or something? And like how and we can connect here? Yeah, like like how there should be somehow like guidelines or some like platform where so we So like can a template message you, which you can use to send to hmm. Pi Ladies? Even Contacts. contacts yeah like but we cannot possibly sometime, have contacts in every region sometime we may not know like what are the other so communities or because sometimes we did, we are like out of thought like from where, whom we should contact we don't have the speaker for okay. the event uh, every time the same speakers are there yeah. so to have the diversity or and to have the new speakers we should have something like that okay uh, and what is the other freelance <laughs> oh, you know. And uh, um, for s uh, selecting speaker, there was a consider color blindness in slide design. Consider cl color blindness in the slide design. So I didn't get this, like how the speaker will. Uh, so usually, I mean, that can be covered in the templates too, but generally people are like red, green, color blind. So then if you put some visualization, which only has red, green, they cannot see the difference. Like okay. what is the difference there? So it's better to use colors like blue, which mm -hmm. are seen like even like red, green, color blind people. So like that. So we can do it in the templates. Okay. And I have just uh, the training part, which we already covered. So that's okay. it. Thank you. Oh. Thanks a lot for the feedback. Uh, so next section, we move on to Yona for if you want to. So um, just one second. Pooja, can, can I have the notes, please? So I, I will write them down later. OK, so Yona's section is on code of conduct and organizing committee. And her feedback is like, uh, yeah. No, I have also written a document. So basically, uh, like in general, what is written, uh, yeah, like is, it's a very nice guide, but it not really applies to Fedora, and especially keeping in mind that usually the organizing teams are very small. So like having one person taking care of all this, I feel it's too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe the DNI can help with some stuff, but uh, otherwise, I think like it's putting them more work. I think so. Like I said before, like not not everything has to be implemented by everyone. So some some like suggestions are for like release parties, but some are also applicable only to flock. Yeah, so but I'm saying that this applies even to flock. I would say so because it's not that many people. Uh, that are part I of think the team. One thing there in the organizing committee thing, which I really liked, was to have like a rep diversity representative, and in the organizing committee, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we do that in Flock already. I know like the or existing organizers take care of this, but I would say, for example, in that case, uh, would be great someone, for example, from our team exactly. to be kind of responsible and uh, be keeping contact with them, like keep in touch with them and tell them, hey, we would like to have these things at Flock. Exactly. Can we make sure this happens? Yes, this like would be great for Flock. And maybe it would apply the same even like for smaller, smaller events. But having something from their team to do this, I think would be too much. So even if we have these things, maybe, I don't know, written somewhere. Maybe a suggested action item from that. We already have this Flock CFP committee and the organizing committee and they do poll people from the community to already be on those teams, but that how that's chosen is not clear. We could deliver that feedback to try to make sure that a diversity perspective is included in the CFP committee and like the existing teams, that, like the existing yes. committees. No, like yeah, like I I would say just like I uh, what I would say from this that would apply for our events, not only flock even smaller ones, is to have someone from the DNI uh, speaking with the organizers. I, especially I would say for flock because small ones, uh, the organizing team is even smaller. But for flock, having someone res responsible or someone that 
wants to take care of this and just like uh, speaking with the organizing team would be the the okay. best approach. So we talk with the flock organizing committee, give them a list of recommendations which we want to see for next year. Yes. And we keep in touch with them to see that they implement it. Yeah. That was the feedback. Okay. Yes. So that's what I have from the organizing committee. Okay. Should I continue with CLC? Yes. So uh, for COC, I have uh, made some comments directly at the document. Uh, mostly it's just, to be honest, just like the, the way how they are written, so I don't think it's like very important, like the registration, which like should be registration form, I guess, because or it's because in the beginning I read it like the registration desk, okay. which I think is the registration form. The second one is include a copy of the COC in the sponsor packet. I'm so not sure what it means. We can just like put a link to COC here on the badge. Behind. Well, it is, I think, or not. I don't see. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, that's true. So that can be a simple thing. It's not too bit difficult, and people can know wh where to look for. Yeah, but this is not written, so maybe we should add this. Okay. <laughs> but sponsor packet, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I will edit it, because okay. it, so these guidelines are basically uh, revised version of the one by mm -hmm. now focus. So but it can be it. like the sponsorship prospectus, probably, and I think this can apply for even flock or small events when they want to partner with uh, some other sponsors. Yeah. Uh, another th we have to move faster. Yeah, fast, please. okay. And the other thing is that uh, uh, it's not very clear, the last part when it, where it says, like, make it, make it clear what uh, the consequences or uh, resolutions of a violation are consider a visual f uh, workflow of code of conduct violation. So this needs to have uh, more support from us, something that can be done from the DNI team or someone that knows how to do it and just give them ready so they can have it at their event. Otherwise, just reading like it is, it's not clear, it would be uh, way more work for them. So okay. that would make it more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's also wrong to do that too. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for your feedback, Yona. Um, yes, go for it. So, so I was going through the venue selection feedback, and I came up with one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. But I thought there was just five. Yeah. So I look at some specific things. There were talked about. Um, ASL and captioning, remote a and remote access. I thought captioning could be one investment from the DNI team for the flock video budget, and also thinking of ASL so captioning. Real time captioning. Getting there. Okay. So I, I think because later in the document it talks about ASL and captioning as an option for event talks, and I thought maybe um, live captioning could be better than ASL as a way to start making this a part of the. Uh, and I, this is this is flock specific. Um, as I know there's multiple sign languages, it's not like ASL is really big in the US because it's American Sign Language, but that's not consistent around the rest of the world. And I also feel like with live captioning, even non-deaf, hard of hearing people can also benefit from that. So it might be an easier, like, you know, like it'd be, it, I feel like it might, you know, if you have like an, like an interpreter, live interpreter, and I, there's no I, one I who's. I understand the positive point. So we need to figure out if we can allocate our budget to real-time live captioning every year at Flow. But I like, because I know this is a, a very contentious topic in the ASL, or in the deaf, hard of hearing community, I'd like to get external feedback on that. Okay. I think we need to like reach out. Do you have reach a out. point of feedback? Can you reach out? Can you take that action item? I can't take that action item. Okay. Um, gender neutral bathrooms in the dock, it was a green check mark, but I think that could actually be an apple. Um, okay. For tampons and pads, I thought that could be required for large events like Flock, and it mentioned doing it in both, um, like both gender restrooms as well. Um, and then there was another part about no standing zones. So this is something for when you have, um, like, in, out in the hallways, there would be like a taped-off area that's explicitly like t taped or taped aside. So like someone with a wheelchair, it'll always be free of people. So someone with a wheelchair can get through a narrow hallway, so people don't, you know, spread out in the hallway. And mm -hmm. I felt like. That's easy enough to do. Like you just have to set tape in a hallway, and like I know, like and that's something that's easier for us to see because we have people in our community who are in wheelchairs too. So I mean, those are just five takeaways that I looked at. Some things that I 
Okay. I thought about. Nikhil and Amrita, do you want to? Nikhil first. Do you want to read out? Over here. Yes. I think these were these ones were mine. Okay, you go read. Okay. Okay. We can we can read later, Jessica, or you can read. Yeah. Okay. So first first point was uh, in the event registration. It was regarding the what to ask and what to not. Uh, maybe we should be specific here. Uh, maybe collecting, we are collecting the data from the users, right? Yeah. So uh, I so guess there, there are some policies in. Uh, so we Red wanted Hat. to do a survey too. So there is this thing, and I think we need to talk more if we are going to go back for a feedback survey after the event or like a registration survey, and what we include and what not to. Yeah. So we need to figure out the legal issues of that. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, what is your okay? Uh, that was the point, and I guess we need to mention it somewhere or put it act action items for. Okay. Well. okay. So for the people who joined recently, we are working on a proposal for uh, event guidelines to make our events more diverse and inclusive. These are the areas we are covering. We just did a quick review through the proposal, and this is this is the feedback, and everybody is going through their feedback, like what, based on the draft. So Amita, do you want to? Yeah. So. For the child care facilities, the first point, of course, is the budget, and we need to figure that out. And then second, uh, even before the budget, we would like to take the feedback from the people who are like uh, the contributors and everybody, the attendees of the, these events, that would they like to take this facility or not? Would mm -hmm. they actually be you know, utilizing this facility? Uh, and the second thing is, or they would like to take a break from Family. So we need to do a survey before we yeah. actually dive deeper into grants. And exactly. Okay. So, uh, and the okay, second thing is will not having children around uh, distract us from the work. Okay. So, in, in event registration, second part was uh, t-shirts. Uh, regarding the sizes, uh, there should be some standards as U.S. sizes and some of the other countries' sizes are different. So maybe like now at clock, like they had like standard M, women's M, fitted M, but like I don't know what is M S. I got the shirt; it was bigger for me. So yeah. Maybe if they have like measurements, like numbers. Thirty-two, sixty-four, yeah, yeah, like that. Instead of saying M S, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that point we can add it in uh, here. And uh, regarding the last one. Uh, that was related to the uh, photo policy. Mm -hmm. uh, here um, you have included if you will have a photographer at the event, include information for attendees explaining that uh, they may be photographed or not and how to opt, opt out them for the re from so the registration. We have so, uh, this already, so, what is the implementation part? So, we have a lanyard for this already that you can just stick if you don't want to opt out. I think if it's not marketed properly then nobody knows so about it I think like for this block they have a tag or, or some lanyard that if you don't want to be in photos yeah, yeah. The, the red one the red, red one if you don't want to be in photos you put the red one so then they yeah. Yeah. that information is not written uh, beside the lanyard is it written over there it was on the side it was on the telegram group. Got it. Uh, the red ones were next to the paper that said really yeah. big no, if you don't want photos to be taken of you, take a red one instead of the other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. need to make it, it more probably visible. Probably just yeah. emphasize on it yeah. better. Actually, for me, who has been taking a lot of pictures, it was really easy just to, even if I took a picture by accident of someone wearing a, a red lanyard, then a process okay. and I could just cut it or mm -hmm. okay, it, it so made my job easier. Sorry mm -hmm. to yeah. break you up. I'm just going to go through my yeah. feedback fast because we are almost out of time, so Maya and Xavier's feedback is remaining. So I, so my feedback was mainly for like for the assessment part. Uh, suppose if we decide to do a survey, if it goes, if we uh, talk through legal and they say it's okay to go through like a survey which doesn't collect any demographic information or like organizers can themselves ask through event bright registration or something, then for that survey maybe we need to provide like an assessment template to the organizer so that it is not like an additional work. So we can have a small template, and they can just use that template to collect feedback. 
so that was my feedback on the assessment part and I, and for me the grant thing like donations were a good suggestion and i think we can do that it has like high impact like and high effort so basically the idea was that for grants people can donate like we already do at flock so you yeah. can cover somebody's budget and so we are, we are already doing that so i just like my feedback was to put a green check mark there and for Xavier's feedback i think the feedback is like Xavier is yeah. yeah so his feedback is okay everything yeah. is crystal clear okay we determine that So we are out of time, so I think we should move on to next. next. I will write down this feedback in the doc, and we can reiterate over the actionable items. Super. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Let's see what we have next. Fedora Women's Day, how much time? Uh, we have about 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Do we want to, somebody would like to come here and. Huh? I think it's better in the end since we have someone from the presentation. Yeah, can we go to translation, ma'am? The translation one. Some, uh, we have not edited. We can answer about it. Yeah. Yeah, or would we want to. Just like to set can up open the ticket. Maybe, well, can we just review really, really quick? Because I think we're doing really well with FWD, but it would be nice to cover like maybe 10, 15 minutes. Like. But, after the, but we need to. We, we can do it later yeah. as well. Okay. Okay. So the translation one, the important content translation, that's what you want to cover? Yes. That is what? Okay. Open the ticket. So since we have uh, the people from the translation team, we would like to cover this ticket, which we have opened a few days back. Uh, there was a co comment on Matthew Miller's um, new strategy for Fedora and the goals for Fedora uh, article that <coughs> the English written <coughs> over there is too complicated to understand for that person, even if he understand that English. So we wanted, uh, the diversity team want that these messages which are very critical for the community should reach out to more and more people and at least these important messages should be translated in all, the all possible languages uh, from where our contributors are so that is what the topic was and m maybe i think to add some context just to try to draw, really focus this conversation we realize that there's some things that may have like a really high impact value on the translation side. But one of the things that's confusing for us is we don't we want to work better with the localization and internationalization teams. And we want to find more ways that we, as the diversity and inclusion team, can collaborate better and have a, like because we don't we, we don't want to do all the uh, we realize we we don't want to take on the work of the translations because that's what's already being done in the community. So we want to find ways to better collaborate and kind of work together on these things. Um, I can pass the mic. Un, deux. OK, it works? Does it work? I don't think so that is working. You can take this. Un, deux, deux. So um, there is two things. The first one is the, the source language being too difficult to understand. We cannot do anything. This is the, um, this is the writer who have to improve this. And it's also an issue that we have, we as translator, to have some strings that are too technical or using a lot of um, in French, the name is jargon, which is you use some technical words that you use with your colleagues, but the, human, the people outside of this world don't understand anything. So this part, we cannot do much. But what we can do uh, for, for allowing to to translate announcement is you can do the new translation system of documentation. And this uh, is ready already. Uh, Adam and I, we did the, the work together. So any, any content you will publish on the 
documentation, diversity uh, parts will be translatable in any kind of languages. So maybe one way w we can start collaborating better is when we see like a, a high priority um, like item or something like you know the, like the mission like the revision of the mission statement articles. One way we could work with the, maybe the Fedora Council is incorporate this feedback loop for them where they will go to a document like one of the Fedora docs repositories and open an issue, open a pull request with the source in like ASCII doc and would that make it like what would make it easy what would make it easy for the internationalization team to take this content and translate it like what's the best approach that you th that you think would be um, first of all we need no issue or thing like that no no on pager we need more emails on the international translation mailing list containing wh what is to translate where to translate and what's the publishing process so where to translate and what's the publishing process is can be solved I if you use the token documentation translation system. So you just have to send us an email. We discussed with the council and uh, our group. We, uh, this page is really important for us to be translated. Can you please go translate it and and you give the link and we will do it. But there is nothing really formal for now in the localization uh, community. We need to set up every new process. So, so probably the best way to start driving the conversation is to better engage with like the mailing list, since it seems like that's where most of the it's it will be is. what what is it. This will be mandatory, yes. I see. But the first step is to publish the internalization and the localized content of the of our documentation system, and this. Is uh, will be done once uh, we have a weblay translation platform installed for the federal community, which will be in the coming month, before December for sure, but in the coming months. So once we have this live and working, then you can come and say this is. We think this is very important for the international community to know, and you will share the link, and we will do our best to translate it. And maybe just one more. One more idea of one way we could do this is what if we, I'm just curious if you think this would be helpful or not, but working with the Fedora Council for them to create a docs repository in their workflow, and when they want to publish an announcement so that would be on the Fedora magazine, they might push the content into that docs repo as well. And it would be a, spe like a specific repository for those uh, announcements. So you want to publish some, some localized announcements on the Fedora magazines? The ones that, like, say, like for it wasn't all magazine articles, but in this case, it was like the mission, the mission, the change of the mission statement, and things mm -hmm. that have a very, like, uh, have very like difficult to understand language for non-English speakers and might be okay. harder to interpret. So I think maybe like I, I, the first thing I'm hearing from you is one, we need to like engage better with the mailing list because that's where most of the internationalization community is. Exactly. And then two, I, and this is just me trying out an idea because I'm thinking like, how can we get the Fedora Council to also buy in on this and how can we make it easy for localization and how can we make it easy for the Fedora Council to to help you guys out with this too. The challenge is the tooling. We have an answer for the documentation that will come but we have no nothing for the community blog or the Fedora magazine for now. It's part of the thing that we should address but for now we have no solution to publish on the Fedora magazine in multiple languages. Some community will love to do it, but for the moment we are using WordPress, and I'm not sure we have the appropriate tooling uh, in WordPress to support our translation team. So, I mean, like a uh, initial thing we could do here to support different languages is that we just add links to the translated text in the original uh, article published on, say, community blog. Yes. So we yes, can do now. that for now. You then, will be able to do it in a few months, but not today. Today, if you want to publish something in multiple language, I okay. just invite you to find a trick with the um, the WordPress system to just display to to make something with tabs and stuff. But it will be um, a do-it-yourself solution. 
that you can put so I, I think since this is on the roadmap, this seems like this could be one way to do it since the docs localization mm -hmm. is, yes. this is, is, is on the, the only the serious soon. way to do it uh, in the close future. And we would love, I think, uh, the, the localization committee would be would love to be able to publish some content on the website in their own language. But for now, there is no process for that. And there is no tooling for that. This is the most, the biggest problem. Okay. For the Fedora magazine and the community blog, I think for those workflows, those aren't. We have a lot of people who write articles with like the web interface and aren't really familiar with like Git, or they they might be like first time contributors. I think it'd be really difficult to move outside of those those workflows for those teams. So we're trying to find like the, the two kind of things I, I'm reading from this to take away are like one coming up with a better way for the DNI team and maybe the council as well to engage on the internationalization mm -hmm. mailing lists and maybe as a workaround since we've we faced this issue even since like for four years I've I've seen the same conversation about the WordPress sites being difficult to translate so maybe now that we finally have this docs localization mm -hmm. piece coming in and that's what we're already encouraging people to will will use to do the internationalization so people will hopefully be comfortable with that already that could be a way that we could work around the pains of, you know, uh, of the WordPress translation, and we can try to focus on when there's really important things that the Fedora Council or someone is trying to push out to engage with that localization process for these articles before publishing. Does to, do those two things sound like a fair mm, to be efficient and to be to be able to scale, like integrating multiple teams, even if they are little is uh, we need to always use the translation platform. And to use the translation platform means uh, having a, a set of tools to generate content from English to translation file, translation file to local content. And this is the only way to be very really efficient with the translator community. If if you want, from time to time, you can totally send a text message uh, to the translation mailing list saying, please send us back this translation of this text for this deadline. Make it reasonable so we have sufficient time, you know what is translating. <laughs> um, this can work for one or two times, but it will never scale or be sustainable over time. So if you create, like, you want to publish an article next week, or next month, I don't know, uh, and you want the, the translator community to, to contribute this, you create a page of repository, you put your content, and you say you send an email, say, this is the content, this is the deadline, to publish the content, either open a pull request, open an issue, or send an email to that, e that, uh, that um, email address, and we can do that. But I think the best is to first focus on the documentation system we use because I think it will be way easier for everyone. You will be able to travel following you, your reason, and we will have our tools and our publishing system to, to do it automatically. It will be way more smooth. Cool. And so. for now, I think the subject about localization of the Federal Magazine or Federal Community Blog, I think we are quite far from being able to do that. So we just, I think, just using some tricks with uh, WordPress to once in a while publish and localize content, we'll do it for now. But it's my personal op opinion. And cool. So, just so that I want to make sure we have time to cover the last topic for our session and make the group photo, I'm just going to say. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the the DNI team ticket and summarize a bit of this discussion. Mm -hmm. And I want to move this conversation to the council as well about how we can engage with them for content that they feel is important mm -hmm. and how we can have that relationship with the internationalization mm -hmm. team. So that's what I'll, I'll do in the next 20 minutes here to drive this conversation Very outside good. of the session. Does that for sound your fair? information as diversity teams, we discussed this morning about uh, federal localization objectives we could have. Um, the first one is to help local communities uh, to uh, with uh, providing some tools for them to discuss in their own language and to exist in their own language. And the second one is to provide 
uh, some tools for the translator community to help them being more efficient, uh, globally speaking, in terms of translation. So we will probably discuss the first point together because it's a huge subject. Excellent. I'll tag you in the comment or in the ticket comment as well, and we can follow up there. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for all the localization folks who came by. Do you have anything to add? Is it good? No. Perfect. So one, one ask over here for the Fedora Women's Day is to ask more and more people to submit the proposal. And it is for all of you uh, that we're going to ping more people to submit the proposals before the deadline. Okay, And uh, I will quickly move on to the team processes now. I would like to brief about uh, the DI Council representative elections and what are the things which we need to cover in that. I had a brief uh, discussion with Ben Cotton this morning about the election process which we need to follow and what data he needs. So uh, we need to open, for, open up the elections for the nominations first. We need to decide on how much time uh, duration this nomination will be open, the nomination window. And then we need to interview these nom nominated people for the position, and then we need to open it up for the voting process. So we first thing which we need to decide is on the time frame, when we would like to do it, and for how long we need to open these windows for the nominations, for the interview, and for the voting process. And then the most critical part is the eligibility for the voting. 